Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to give an overview of the Safari web browser settings on your MacBook device. So this should hopefully be a pretty straightforward tutorial, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and open up the Safari web browser. Up at the top is going to be our main settings that we're going to be going through in today's video. So if you select the Safari button itself, so if you just go ahead and left click on Safari, you will see many common functions will be listed right here. The first one will say about Safari, so you want to check what version number you're running, it'll show it right there. You can also view extensions by selecting the second option. If you want to view preferences, which we're going to go to in a moment, this will be a lot of our deeper settings that we'll be getting into, but we're going to come back to that in a moment. You have a clear history option here, and then if you do services, that's really not applicable for most of you guys, and then you have the option to hide Safari, so minimize it down to the system dock, or you can just quit Safari altogether. If you select the preferences button, just going back to the earlier setting, you see there are many different tabs here which should cover most of the settings you'd want to cover. So you can adjust how Safari opens. So if you want to open up as a new window, a new private window, or just start up from the last session you can. You can also adjust where new windows or tabs open with. So if you want to set it to a start page, home page, empty page, you can do that. You can change your home page by navigating over to whatever website you want to set as your home page. And then you can select the set the current page one and that would adjust the home page to whatever that current page would be. Where it says remove history items, you can set it to automatically remove your history after so much time has elapsed. You also show your favorites in a certain icon, so you can see there should be a favorites button that or a star icon. The default file download location, you can see it's set to automatically go to the download folder. Otherwise you can set it to ask for each individual download or you can set a custom location by selecting the other option. And it says remove download list items after so much time. So you can set it to after one day when Safari quits upon successful download or manually. So that will just delete the list that is saved in Safari. You shouldn't actually delete the download itself. If you go ahead and left click on the tabs tab, you can see again pages and tabs instead of windows and set to automatically. Again, you can see different key combinations on how you want to open up the tabs here. Autofill, so if you have different passwords saved on websites and you just don't want to have to type it in every time you visit certain pages, you can adjust this autofill web form data here. So different websites such as credit card information, maybe you want to have it saved automatically or prompt you to save it, maybe you don't. Same thing for usernames and profiles and then also with other forms and information for your contacts. Password option, you're going to have to go ahead and enter in your password of your computer here and then hit enter. So any website passwords you have saved would be listed in here, which you could delete or add, depending on what you want to do. Again, this would go tie into the autofill form data, so if you have it saved, it probably will be in here as well. Go ahead and select the search tab. We're going to go on to the next option here. You can see which search engine you want to set your Safari web browser to use. You can also include search engine suggestions, or you can uncheck it. If you know which engine you want to use, you might not need to keep that check marked. And smart search field, you can keep these options selected as well, depending on what you want to do. Next tab is security. So fraudulent sites, when you visit a fraudulent site, Safari uses the Google Safe Browsing to identify fraudulent websites. I don't see any reason why you'd want to uncheck that. And then web content enabling JavaScript right there. Privacy, you want to prevent cross-site tracking, that's enabled. And then you do not probably want to block all cookies because websites actually need them, so that's why it's unchecked marked there. Websites option. You can adjust websites to allow different app permissions on your computer, such as with your camera or microphone. If you want to allow, say, Google Hangouts to access your camera or microphone, you may have to adjust things in here if there's some sort of issue with the browser not allowing such access. And again, this is extensions. You saw we had a shortcut in the beginning of this tutorial. None are installed. And you can select the more extensions button down there to go to the extension store if you choose to do so. There should be a whole bunch of extensions to pick from. And then there's an advanced button in here. Smart search field. Again, that was going back to something earlier we looked at. You can change the font size of accessibility through there. 
uh, style sheet. Probably wouldn't recommend really changing any of this to be perfectly honest with you. And if you wanted to show developer mode in the menu bar, you can. Otherwise, we're just going to keep that unchecked there. And if we head over to the file tab, we have other options here too, such as opening new windows, private windows, new tab. If you want to open up a specific file in the Safari browser, so it would just launch it in the browser, you can do that. You can also close this window or all Safari windows through there too. And you can import or export bookmarks from other websites as well. If you select the edit tab, you can adjust your spelling and grammar settings here. You can find a certain search. If you want to do find and then Google search, it'll open up a new search field up here at the top. Just start typing in whatever you're searching for. It doesn't appear to open up a new tab. And let's head over to the edit tab now. You can go ahead and paste in. So you can copy and paste. And then you can select all on a page, all the text, find certain words again. You can also add different emojis and symbols by selecting that and give you a clipboard to go ahead and do that. Speech, if you wanted to pick up on your speaking, perhaps you're using some sort of narration on your browser and you need to give it access to Siri or some other voice to speech recognition software, you might have to select that. Transformations, you can go ahead and make text upper or lowercase or capitalize all the text, which is nice. You know, there are third party websites you might have to use for that, but it's nice that they actually have it built into the browser. Substitutions, again, this is very Microsoft Office y in the way that it offers you different grammar and spell checking options. Heading over to the View tab, just kind of trying to wrap this up here, but generally we've covered almost everything already. but View tab, you can show favorites bar, tab bar, or status bar. You can translate web pages here too. You can encode text, and you can see different languages you can do that with. History, you can show all the history, which will open up a different tab. Go right to the home page, or you can clear all history. Heading over to the bookmarks tab, you can show the start page, show bookmarks, edit bookmarks, or add the bookmark folder to the browser screen. Uh, the window button, you can go ahead and minimize the web browser by selecting that. You can zoom in on a web page. You can tile the window to the left side of the screen or to the right side. So kind of like that snap feature in Windows, you can make it go half screen to the left or right. And you can arrange tabs by title or website. And you can also duplicate the tab in this window. And then finally, the help, you just go ahead and view acknowledgments, Safari help page, that kind of thing. Just doing a quick look at the browser itself, you have your close button, your minimize button, enter full screen button, and then over you have a reader mode option here or show sidebar. Go ahead and click on that. You can see favorites in here and any reading list items as well. This is your back and forward button. If you were on a web page and want to go back to the previous page, you select the left one. If you want to go to the right, it'll be the following page. This little badge icon that's a security. It'll tell you if this website is secure or not. And then you have your search bar address bar up at the top. Don't really need to explain that. Going further over, this far right button would actually go ahead and share a web page. If you want to share it via email or some other social media platform, you can. Just give you a shareable link. Uh, the plus button will add a new tab. And then finally, the button on the far right over here will show a tab overview. So pretty straightforward guys and then if you just scroll down on this launch page which if you choose to have this as a default landing page you can you can see it shows you favorites frequently visited privacy report and series suggestions so you could spend a whole bunch of time going through even more settings but I feel like for a eight nine minute video we cover pretty much all the basic settings to the Safari web browser here so but like I said, pretty straightforward process, guys. Do hope that I was able to help you out, and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.